Unclear. But today, what we are playing, Golgari, Boats, and Joels. Get some Joels in the chat for uh, for the Joel, the, the Isika's Joliet. So this is a, it's a boat deck. So we have the core, what, what I call a boat deck is Elvish Mystic, Llanowar Elves, Chariot, Sky Sovereign. That like kind of core, fast mana with both Chariot, Sky Sovereign. Uh, the reason these cards are so powerful is the removal in the format is not the best at handling vehicles. There's a lot of sorcery speed removal, sweepers. Those cards don't touch the chariots and the sky sovereigns of the world. Now, you might be familiar with a gruel version of this deck that plays Bonecrusher Giant, uh, a Crow in War, and Reckless Stormseeker. Um, but the, I think the biggest issue that gruel boats has is it doesn't have good interaction. Now, granted... I do agree with you that Travier Trespasser in a deck that has Chariot and Boat is a much worse card than Reckless Stormseeker. Fatal Push and Thoughtseize are massive upgrades to any interaction that the red deck has, so that's kind of the, the genesis and the concept behind trying black as opposed to red, uh, because Push and Thoughtseize are just so such powerful cards. A couple of Misery Shadows here, just filling out the two-drop slot where you would normally see Scavenging Ooze. And then Briar Bridge Tracker, I actually kind of like quite a bit, and I've been considering trying in the Gruel version. I don't know what I'd cut for it, though. Um, but it triggers, like, you have tokens with Beast and Chariot, so you're, this guy's almost going to be a 4-3, even if you crack the clue, which is nice. Uh, mana base, pretty much the same, just kind of, like, copy-pasted, swapped out some lands uh, from the Gruel deck. And then... <clears throat> Black also gives you another good cyber card here in Go Blank, which is very good against like Phoenix and uh, any of the decks utilizing the graveyard. Uh, so that you get that. Uh, Terra Sunder is a cool card that you get as well because you can splash the black half off of it. Uh, Scavenging Ooze, more for graveyard, de more graveyard stuff. Outland Liberator for boat mirrors and things of that nature. Vraska for the grindy matchups, TM. Uh, Trophy for when you need to destroy a target permanent, I don't know. And then three Damping Sphere for Lotus Field, so. <clears throat> So every time I've tried a Jund version of boats, the mana base, the mana has felt so bad, and I cannot figure out a good way to to build like a Jund mana base that can support Elvish Mystic, Thoughtseize, and then red red cards on turn two or turn three. I just cannot figure it out. What's up, JS? So this hand does not have a two drop, but I believe my opponent is playing Rakdos, so I think I'm going to keep this hand. Uh oh, that's not Rakdos. Well, this hand is particularly bad against Abzi and Grease Fang, but... No, I'm still working on the deck list. I'm, I think, like, I'm close. I've played a couple leagues with it, had, like, some middling results, and I think I'm pretty close to, to being able to... Being it, to being a place where I want to play it on stream, but I need to work on it just a little bit more. Uh, maybe we'll do that sometime next week. You know, have a good, you know have a good way to practice Phoenix by myself? Mmm... When you say practice Phoenix, do you mean just, like, like playing leagues? Because, I mean, leagues are probably the best way to just go about, like, learning sequencing. The thing about the Phoenix that's really hard to, to, to grasp is, like, how to sequence your cantrips. And I personally haven't played a ton of Phoenix, so I'm probably not the best person to ask. But there's, like, there's definitely a lot of, like, a lot of percentage points that people leave on the table by playing Phoenix where they just, like, sequence their cantrips in the wrong order. Also, if I was in the play this game, just saying. Uh, unfortunately, we were on the draw, and we have we have died. Mm. Guess how many broadcasts I was put on for January? I'm gonna guess 10. Hey, man, if I was in the play, I would've won this game, so... Because <laughs> I would've played this card before they played this card. I'm just saying. 13, I was pretty close. Didge. We are dead. Okay. Grease Fang. Post board. Let's bring in Go Blank. Scavenging Ooze. Tear Asunder. Uh, I think I'm going to cut these trackers. Okay. How much do we have to turn on Fatal Push? We actually have nothing, right? We have no Revolt Trigger. If I cut the trackers, which I think are too slow in this matchup anyway. So I'm just going to cut Fatal Push. Because I could keep in, like, a Miser's copy, or have the trophy in my deck. The trophy's maybe not bad. Yeah, let's try this. I don't know if I want to go, like, as far as playing Outland Liberator. Because, like, holding up mana for that thing kind of sucks. Mm, okay, this sounds good. We did indeed get trickeried. Trying to get it a 14th one, that's a lot. 
how to convince my parents to let let me play MTGO. Please help. I'm desperate. I I don't know if I can help you with that one, Soda Master. That sounds like that sounds like a problem that that you have to uh, you have to solve. I like that trophy can kill um, more stuff. Like trophy can kill Shieldred, whereas Decay can't. Uh, and one of the vehicles deck's biggest problems, I guess this this list has fatal push, so it's maybe less of a problem, is answering Shieldred. You know, some really good times, like really good, but seriously, yeah, and all right, that's that's where I'm at. What's up, Eccles? That is exactly where I'm at. The old turn two pick up Giganta, a very powerful play. You ever just like fuck around and pick up Giganta on turn two? I do like the creativity deck. I have that deck in paper. I'm assuming you're talking about Pioneer, right? Uh, I would recommend looking at the list that... Ooh, nice little go blank. I would recommend looking at the list that um, that Mr. Rabe won... I think it was either last week's challenge or the week before. Uh, recommend checking out Mr. Rabe's list. M-R-R-A-E-B, I think it is. I think their list is really sound. I like their sideboard plan a lot, too. I think that was also the list that Tudors played. Ooh, do we tap out? Tapping out's pretty bad if they go Salvage, Flip, Barhelion. Surely they won't go Salvage, Flip, Barhelion, right? Because, like, I, if they if I don't tap out and they just play their own Chariot, it's kind of bad for me. So I, I think I have to tap out here. Yeah, I think it was the same list that Tutors played. That deck's good. They did not hit Barhelion, but they hit Boat. Hmm. I mean, Boat's more beatable, I guess, but... It's also more beatable. <clears throat> so they almost certainly don't have Grease Fang in their hand. I think I just play Boat here, right? So we can go Boat, kill, a Cat Token. Question is, do we attack, though? Because they're probably going to crew the Chariot. Do we offer the trade? I think offering the trade is good, because I get an extra Cat. I think the trade's fine. Ah! Got a dono. What was it from? Was it from Eccles? Sir Eccles with the $25 donation for our second donation slot for tomorrow. Much appreciated, buddy. I already have the deck list. Unless you want to make any changes, but you let me know. I've had so many songs with Liz from this channel. Yeah, I, I like to think we have a pretty good playlist going on. Okay, so I can... I think I just crew the boat. I'm just going to hold up the uh, Terra Sunder here, I believe. Just crew boat, attack, kill a token. I can play the second chariot next turn and still hold up the Terra Sunder. Yeah, you can post the link in chat, honestly. I already have the deck list, so. <clears throat> yeah, we're just throwing chariots. We're just throwing cat cars at each other until one of us concedes. <laughs> nah, bolt snap. This time it's for real. This time it's for real. Officially over. What was the final straw in modern? Hmm. It's too many straws to count. A whole package of straws. Just non-creature or something? No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Surely they don't have a third chariot, right? Like, you would, surely they don't have a third chariot. Yeah, it was the whole drink. <laughs> they do not have a third chariot. That's good for me. Okay, I will cast my chariot. I have a second chariot. Look, we both drew two chariots, so it's fair, right? I assume they're going to kill my boat here, which is mildly in a mild inconvenience, but I can live with it. All right, boat down. But we have cat advantage. It's always good to have cat advantage. And we kind of also have chat advantage, too, so... Chat and cat advantage? What could possibly go wrong... Oh, there are fiends in four minutes. Are they dead on board? Block, block, block. Take four. Not dead on board. Pretty close, though. Cat in the chat. Uh, I mean, I don't really need to cast Go Blank, because it's not like I can really... I can't die next turn, so... They are extremely dead. Even if they Parhelion me, I just take 13 and... Alright, you're dead. Five foot stupid what? I don't even know what that those those are words. Yep, words. <laughs> Cat advantage. 
Okay, game three on the draw. Do we want to change anything? I still don't like these fatal pushes because we don't really have any revolt trigger. Or, excuse me. I, chat gets so mad at me when I say revolt trigger. We can't enable revolt. My apologies. It's not a trigger. It's just it's just revolt. It's there, you know. But, God, chat gets so mad at me when I, whenever I say the words revolt and trigger. Some would say they get triggered. Uh, Thoughtseize Trespasser, I think, is good enough. <laughs> yeah, even revolted perhaps. Yeah, this is the new mic. I think it sounds good. I listen. I listened back to the the, the the stream last night. Double salvage. Oh fuck! I didn't plan for this. I guess I'll still take one. I think. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's the Sure M7. Okay, that's not bad. Although being forced the trophy at Grease Fang, giving the mana to ramp into Chariot's kind of awkward. So. So, these are the five cards they hit. They did not hit a vehicle, and they put Wayfinder into their hand. Okay. So, now they have these three. What's up, Daniel? How you doing, buddy? Alright, now they hit the vehicles. Put a courtyard in their hand. So, we know about Chariot and Tomb. Uh, annoying, but we have Trespasser, which they can't take. They're probably going to take Chariot. Oh, good. To my Back to my roots, as it were. We took a little detour yesterday for some modern, but back to the format that I know and love. My only true friend. Well, and chat, you know. He did, in fact, take the chariot. So let's play a waste, because I don't believe I will ever activate Mute Vault next turn. And let us eat the Singleton Parhelion. Because there is a chance that we can beat a boat. I mean, if they just go, you know, Grease Fang, get both back, probably not, but... All right, they decided to play the Temple Guard instead of the Overgrown Tomb, so we know they have a land left over. We have to really hope that their last card below that is not another... is not Land Boat. Uh, I still think I'm going to deploy the Lovestruck Beast rather than hold up Trophy. This might be incorrect, but it gives me a good blocker for the Chariot, <clears throat> which is nice. Good save there is about to cry. <laughs> what would have to change for me to go back to modern? Uh, honestly, Aetherclaw, the list is way too long and way too unrealistic, so I don't even want to get into it. Like, the answer to your question is ban half of Modern Horizons, which they're obviously not going to do. I've just kind of resigned to my, I've, I've resigned to my fate at this point when it comes to modern. It is what it is. Good draw. But, you know, that's why there are plenty of formats in Magic. If one format doesn't make me... If one format... I, if there's a format that I don't enjoy, there's another format that can replace it, so... Okay, they're deciding to crew the Chariot. Okay with that. Mm, I could attack with Lovestruck Beast. Uh, the only... It's kind of awkward, so if I attack with Beast, and they attack with Chariot, and I crew the boat... They could have Terra Sunder, but if they have Terra Sunder, I have second boat anyway, so yeah, I'm actually fine with attacking. I guess they might double block if they have a second chariot, so maybe that's why the attack is bad. Attack is pretty bad if they have second chariot, right? But if they lost card second chariot, I still think I'm pretty far ahead. Also, like, clearing the chariot out could be good for... Uh, okay, I changed my mind. Fuck that. I changed my mind. I think it's bad. It's just so bad if they have second chariot. <clears throat> Grizzly Salvage. So they did not hit a Grease Fang. They found Informant Tomb. Chosen Informant makes sense. Popper is fun. I haven't played Popper in so long. I know they banned a good portion of the initiative cards, but are there people that still play initiative in Popper? Because I think they left some of the some of the shitty ones. Uh do we shove with everything? Yeah, I think so. They don't have a Parhelion in the graveyard. So I think I can afford to do it this way. And they just attack with everything, kill Informant. I guess this way they can trade for the Lovestruck Beast. Actually kill the Cat Token. Oh, wait. No, this is bad, because now they might just trade for the Human Token. Eh, if they trade for the Human Token. Like, I'm fine if they want to go Crew. I guess they can go... Crew, chump the love struck, eat the human token, take six. But yeah, them killing the one one maybe is bad. 
Because if they kill the 1-1, one, one, then I can't attack with the Love Strike Beast next turn. Okay. So they're just doing that. All right, take 10. Let me go pick up Gigantha. Hold up Mutabolt. I mean, I guess I could have held up Overgrown Tomb instead, but they know my last card, so. The green and white one C play, right with him, right list that are kind of sweet. Yeah, that's fair. Did they they banned the blue one, right? It's the sneaking, it's like the 1-4 flyer for four. I think they banned that one. Pretty sure that's one of the ones they banned. I know they blamed the black ones because of Dark Ritual. Another si Yet another situation where they're just like, okay, here's fast mana. Here's cards that you can cast with fast mana. Well, it's just, you know, like the, as the kids say, a Mishra's Workshop situation. Mm, okay, what do we got? Two elves, two boats, huh? Eh, I mean, elf on the play, I think, is good enough. We really have anything to do after the elf, but I guess hand is just, just about good enough. If they don't kill our elf, we can at least pick up Gigantha. But I'll probably just play second elf to set up turn three boat. Elf dead. <clears throat> elf is dead. Boat, not the best against Phoenix. This could be creativity. Okay, let's play Lovestruck Beast first. We're on Spell Pierce. That is certainly better to do than, than picking up Gigantha. Still not really sure. I guess the Spire Bluff Canal. Most of the creativity list I've seen don't have Spire Bluff Canal. Is Grease Fang falling off? Uh, I play against it once every once in a while. Not nearly as much as I used to, but I would say it's like decreasing along with Mono Green. Okay, Phoenix confirmed. Uh, I mean, I could Thought Tease here, but I think it's just better to get Boat in play. Especially while the shields, da shields are down for Spell Pierce. I guess they can pieces me here, but... And now we can even Thoughtseize first, okay. To, like, do a Lightning Axe check. Swamp is actually a really good draw, too. I guess we could have crewed, the, crewed, crewed with Mutavolt anyways, but... Oh, they just don't have Lightning Axe, okay. So, wow, their hand's bad. I just take the Charter Course, right? Their hand sucks. And then we can go... So I, I can animate the Mutavault, crew with the Mutavault and the human, and also pick up Gigantha, which I think is better, right? Hmm. This is interesting. I can't I can't attack with Boat and the Hive. I don't have enough mana for all that. I think what I want to do is... Yeah, I'm going to do it this way. I'm just going to crew with these two and pick up Gigantha, I think. I think this is right. Attack, kill their Shredder. They go to 13... Next turn, we can play Jeff, crew, attack for eight, put them to five. Black green trade binder. I mean, it's just like, I don't, I don't know, I wouldn't call it a trade binder. We got all four ofs. You got four thoughts eases lying around in your trade binder? It's a pretty good trade binder. Phoenix. Okay, so another last two cards are Iteration Time Walk. Wait, how much is Iteration's 11, right? So they can't Iteration Time Walk next turn. I guess if they draw a land, they can time walk if I don't hive them. Hmm. But they can't iteration time walk. What am I scared? What am I worried about? How do I lose this game? I'm trying to think. Because if I fire up the hive of the eye tyrant, I can't fire up the boat. That's that's the problem with this. Six, seven, eight, nine. Right? Like if I go play chariot, cr animate Muta Vault, crew, attack for nine, kill Phoenix, put them to two. Hmm, I think that's my line. Because, so their hand is Iteration Time Walk. They'll have seven cards in their graveyard. Even if they draw land, Iteration's the first card. Oh, it would be exactly enough, right? Right, they would have exactly enough if I did that, right? Because this would be, this would be the seventh card, and this would be the eighth card. But then they'd be taking two turns and exiling both of their Phoenixes. With no cards in hand? I think I'm okay with that. Like, how worried am I about them taking two turns with no graveyard and no cards in hand? I don't... I, I think that's fine. Now let's just do it this way. Like, I guess I could not attack with the boat there, but I don't think I can... Is there a way that I can present a two-turn clock if I don't attack with boat? I don't think so. I feel like, it's kind of tough for me to do that. Mm-hmm.
Okay, Iteration Fiery Impulse and Edge. All right, up a game against Phoenix. You love to see it. You love... I think maybe they thought they were going to get back to Phoenixes, but... You love to see it. All right, game two. <clears throat> graveyard deck. Bring in anti-graveyard cards. Liberator stinks. Trophy stinks. Sphere stinks. Common trap. Don't bring in Sphere against Phoenix. I don't think it's really that good. Uh, tracker can go... I think Fatal Push is good because they have Shredder and potentially sideboard young Pyromancers. I'm actually not the biggest fan of Shadow. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably still good, though. Maybe you can trim a boat in the draw and maybe cut the fourth Fatal Push. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't really have a last cut here. Maybe I can cut more boats. What's up, Molly? I could cut more boats because they're bad against both Spell Pierce and Lightning Axe. Old Frasca, I don't know about that. Need some help? What do you play tomorrow to burn 30 QPs? What's tomorrow? Fezzik, thank you so, so much for the two months of support. Appreciate you, buddy. Welcome back. Hope you're having an excellent day today. It's Legacy. I mean, you know the answer is just going to... You know my answer is just going to be play Initiative. I think if you're not playing Initiative at this point in Legacy, you're doing something wrong. I, like, you just have to be doing something wrong. I don't love this hand, but I'm already on six, so I think it's fine. Why is initiative so good? Uh, well, I actually still don't really fully understand what the dungeon does, but uh, it kills your opponent very quickly. So the issue with these white stompy decks in the past have always been they can't clock that effectively. And the initiative, like, the initiative goldfish kills you on turn four. So it's like you get to play all of these awesome prison elements, Chalice the Void, uh, sometimes Trinosphere, Thalia Guardian of Three, been all these, like, really good prison elements... Fast mana with Ancient Tomb, Chrome Mox, Chalice the Void, or excuse me, Ancient Tomb, Chrome Mox, City of Traders, and then you also get to play this incredibly fast clock. So it's just like the combination of everything is just makes it so busted. Yeah, that's true. I guess like the the format specialist maybe, and there's always going to be those those people who you know, Delver player is going to play Delver, <laughs> kind of thing. But if you're not like explicitly a Delver player or Brian, your your name is not Brian Cook, then you should probably play the Initiative. Hmm. Kind of an issue, considering I don't have a copy of Fatal Push in my hand. Also, 3-3, three, three, not the best, into a 0-4. Oh, I'm feeling com not feeling confident to play the Mirrors. I mean, th there's not really a ton of skill involved in the Mirror, just win the die roll. <laughs> like, and if you want to, if you want to hedge for the Mirror, just play, like, more removal spells in your sideboard. Like, play Path to Exile and that kind of shit, you know? Ooh, they flipped. Wait, really? It's gonna let me attack into the thing? Built red green boats, and I'm stoked to see the versions being played. Yeah, we're trying some different stuff today. We get a black version and a white version as well. Because I think, like, the core, the boat core is good, but I think there are things that, that can be improved. And this 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 version just has, like, a lot better interaction. Uh, I'm just going to play a second Trespasser, because it's a 4-4. Four -four. I'm not going to play the elf to flip the Trespassers. Empty Shrine. Empty Shrine's not bad. I mean, at the end of the day, it is still just a one mana one one, right? <clears throat> also, I think if you want to make the mirror, if you want to have a better mirror match, just play Boros. Because Boros, I think Fable is sick in the mirror, and then I also think that uh, the extra initiative creature is good. So, I think my recommendation if you're looking to hedge for the initiative mirror is just play Boros. No, this is only match two. Our first match was against Grease Fang, so no mono green yet. What kind of hand did they possibly keep? They haven't done anything. I guess this is going to get spell pierced. Maybe I should have just not played the chariot. Turn on their spell pierce. I, I don't understand what kind of hand they kept. This is very strange. Maybe they're waiting and they're going to set like just play four spells in the same turn. I mean, it's possible. But like if they had cantrips, you would think they would just use the cantrips earlier on, right? Rogues was never good in Pioneer in the first place. Sedge. They said, my hand is just not it. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> Gee, geez. Hand is just not it. Yeah, just just not it has been called. Feels bad, man. All right, 2-0, let's go. Jeff hath returned. Uh, so this hand is Thoughtseize, Trespasser, Chariot on the play. I think that's good enough. This hand would be a lot nicer if we draw an elf, but... 
All right, what you working with, Squirtle? Ooh, the waste not bracket. Hmm. Oddly enough, I kind of want to take Thoughtseize. I don't know if I should, but... <clears throat> it's definitely Thoughtseize or Waste Knot. It's one of those two. Can I beat a Waste Knot? I'm trying to think of what's the worst that could happen. So if I take Thoughtseize, they go turn two Waste Knot, I play Trespasser, they Liliana make me Edict, then I play Chariot, and then I have a Chariot and two two twos. they have a Liliana at one and a Waste Knot. Then they go, like, uptick, I discard a land, they make two mana, they play Rankle. Like, that doesn't sound that bad, right? I'll take Thoughtseize. I don't think it sounds that bad. I do have Besage you too. That's a good point, yeah. If I absolutely feel like I need to, I can always Besage you it. Okay, that is a phenomenal draw. Because now I can just play Chariot on turn three. Yeah, that was a phenomenal draw step. Okay, they have they have deployed the Waste Knot strategy. Waste Knot. Yeah, this like kind of embarrasses the Liliana too. Like they just can't even play the Liliana into the chariot. So what is this? If I discard a land, they get mana. That's fine. You can give them mana. Okay. Liliana Rankle, three unknowns. What do we got? What do we got? Liliana? Liliana down tickle just sack a cat. I will sacrifice my cat. Not in game though, in game, obviously. Davriel. Rogue Shadow Mage. Sack the Elf. Uh, so we know they have Liliana Rankle. I mean, I'm still discarding the land, right? I actually have a sick turn here. I can go... I can go Trespasser and Besaju, because this is a legendary creature to get the discount on Besaju. It's actually kind of sick, even if I don't draw a land. All right, what you going to do with all that mana? All that mana in that pool. <clears throat> uh, interesting. I mean, how much do I really care about this waste not if I'm hellbent, right? Like, it doesn't do anything if I have no cards in hand. So what if I just played my hand? <laughs> you know what I mean? You ever just play the cards in your hand? <laughs> waste not, not the best against the hellbent opponent. Usually no, yeah. <laughs> To get to go. Kill Davriel, attack you, attack you, attack you. Davriel dies, we get a kitty cat. Rankle can force me to draw. I mean, if they go if they go land Rankle, they're just fucking dead, right? They're so dead. Oh. That is that is one of the cards of all time. Has to be the single best top deck in my entire deck. That was a really good draw. Make a clue. You'll love to see it. Copy clues. <coughs> only plays decks that have a great matchup versus blue black control. I think he's overreacting since it's only 1% according to Goldfish. What should he do? Is this like the classic FNM debate of like what 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 do we do when my when my metagame is, you know, 80% blue white control? I don't know, man. Just like play some cards that are good against control. When people say that, they're they're mostly just joking, to be honest. Swish Gaming, thank you so much for the raid. Much appreciated. Hope you had a good stream. Welcome, Raiders. Let's get some Doom hypes in chat for the Raiders, please, and thank you. So they are mono black. The I guess they're they're like eight rack. Yeah, I wanted to play one card for the grindy matchups, as the kids like to say. So we probably want some waste not answers, right? Cards that remove Waste Knot from the battlefield. Uh, I think Scavenging Ooze is kind of mid. I feel like Shadow doesn't do a ton. Fatal Push is probably bad, right, actually? Let's just cut the Fatal Pushes. Keep the Shadows. Like, what creatures do you think they really have? 6-3 in the Super with Heading Manic. Did you play my list? Please tell me you played the list that we 5 would with. Secret Croxa? Yeah, eh, maybe... Shadow's good against Kroxa. I trust Bastard too. I don't care about Kroxa. Your own list? Well, that's why you had three losses. Just saying. If you had played the Secret Doom list, then... <laughs> Shh. We don't talk about that. Dude, I am, like, so unbelievably hyped for Guitar Hero next week. I am I am so excited. It's gonna be sick. I do play Explorer. I, haven't, I have, um... Actually, with the recent Explorer Anthology, 
I decided to kind of reinstate my arena account, and by reinstate I mean just log in because I hadn't logged in in a year or whatever. And I uh, I purchased the anthology, and I've been building a lot of different decks. I right now I currently have boats, Rakdos mid, Rakdos sack, Grease Fang, Boros heroic, and I think I had something else built too. But yeah, I've been playing a decent amount of Explorer. Nothing really spicy, just like the decks that I normally would play in Pioneer that are, you know, available to play on Arena. They actually chose the draw. I mean, I get it, but it's not like, it's not like Pi, it's not like Modern 8 Rack where you should choose the draw, I think. Um, I mean, even if I don't get pushed, the sand still sucks, right? Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, this is better. I think I'm going to put back the Trespasser, because I'd rather... I'm definitely keeping all my lands, and I think this is a better 3-drop to kind of, like, just get more cards in hand. Trespasser does not seem that great against them. I mean, it's good in the sense that if they kill it, they have to discard it. It's like a 2-for-1, but this card's also a 2-for-1. Yeah, I was putting back a 3-drop. I was just, you know, debating on which 3-drop to put back, is all. Demir mid-range, but with Snow for Ascendant Spirit that is doing well. Interesting. Kind of like a, a Delver-style deck. Sounds kind of cool. Fuck you, Orion Pioneer. The interaction with Fires is awful. I mean, you could say the same thing about Garuga, right? Like, Fires with any comp insert companion here is bad. You know? <clears throat> when are we going to play Garuda Fires? Ooh, that, sh that should be a stream. That should be a, a deck idea, right? Garuda Fires. That sounds kind of sick. Ban all of the companions has been called. Oh, let me down. Yeah, the song's a banger. Absolute banger. All right, give me a Thoughtseize bug. Please let me draw Chariot. You gotta watch out for the Bontu's Last Reckoning. 60 card Enigmatic. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, Enigmatic plus Fires does get significantly worse without Asylum Visitor. Uh, it gets a lot worse without companions, but... My brother in Christ, my, my opponent played a Asylum Visitor. Okay. Uh, do I trade? I mean, I think so. Right? I think it's Vigilance. I don't know if that trade's good for me, but it might not be. I don't know either. <laughs> I have no idea. It's like a free attack for me because my thing is Vigilance, but... All right. Jeff, save me. Save me, Jeff. Jeff is like the actual homie. He's always there when you need him. Yeah, Rip Modern indeed. Saw them a few months ago. I haven't seen this. I haven't seen them live. They actually did come to my area, but I was uh, dumb and forgot to get tickets. Uh, okay, I guess that's a better play. Yeah, I know, right? Homie, the Jeff the homie. Should I play her on Bontu's Last Reckoning? Yeah, I think that was a, a similar show that also came to my area. I don't know if it was exactly that same show, but because I think they like they switch up the uh, opening acts when they travel to different different cities. Fifty fifth, ship those chesties. You gotta open them though. That's the requirement. I mean, there are there are Gyruda decks in Pioneer. Yeah, there there are Gyruda decks in Pioneer. I just saw Counterparts two weeks ago. That show was so good. Yeah, 383. I actually, I was going to play it while I was logged on to work, but I just forgot to register. Kind of glad that I didn't play it, to be honest. Because there's a lot of people. Eh, if they have Bontus, they have Bontus. I think I need to apply a little bit more pressure. Nice, that's awesome, Ventus. Congrats, buddy. That's sick. Yeah, what is when? Mm, I should have copied Clue, actually. Copying Clue is better if they have the Wrath. Yeah, that was bad. <clears throat> when are we going to become a full-time Garuda streamer? What's the most underappreciated companion? Probably Umori, right? Go for the throat end step. Okay. Leads me to believe they probably don't have Bontus in hand. Okay, I'd actually like to draw a spell here. Because <laughs> I don't want to give them mana. Any thoughts uh holding Elf back the hub to sage you up? Um, well, the thing about that is... Oh, I guess I would have had the Gigantha. I was thinking about, yeah, I, them villain killing the Gigantha makes it awkward, but... 
maybe I could have not attacked with the elf and just main phase, like, if I pass turn and they go to end step, go for the throat of the Gigantha, that I can respond and kill the waste knot. I might have been fine. The issue with waste, the, the issue with, um, wait, why didn't I draw a card? Chat, am I missing something? Is this card bugged? These two were in my hand, right? Or am I dumb? Did somebody clip that? That drew the waste? I thought I had the waste in hand. Oh, okay. I don't know why I thought... I, I thought this was already in my hand, but never mind. I'm dumb. Okay, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Confirmed. <clears throat> okay. I mean, that's fine, right? Can they even attack? I don't think they can. Any creature should kill them. Good enough for me. Can make sure I keep the right chariot. Does it... Keep this. I think I kept the right one. I hope I did. I guess it's not lethal, right? They can chump block the chariot. They can chump block the chariot. But they go to one. Did the same thing again. I should have copied the fucking clue. I guess I'll blow up a waste knot now. Yeah, I fucked up. I should have copied the clue. That was bad. I did this. I did it the last turn, too. <laughs> And I, we just talked about this. Wait, they have a removal spell? One mana card kills Chariot. So they're pushing a token? Sure. Okay, that's fine. So now they get a one. They have no cards in hand. Uh. Yeah, let's just kill a Waste Knot now. So they get, they get four mana now, but... <laughs> Can't do anything with their four mana now. It would be kind of funny if they had, like, an untapped Castle Lock Twain or something. Alright, I'm pretty sure their only out is Bontus. But even if they have Bontus, we still have a Chariot, and they're at one, so any creature that crews this kills them, and we have a clue left over. We should have three clues, but... Kalidus. I think that's still lethal, right? They go... And now it's definitely lethal. I think it was lethal anyways, but... Kalidus! Yeah, pretty sure it was lethal anyways, right? We go tap these two. Tap these two, crew the chariot. They go block, block, go to... Yeah, they still would still, would still be lethal. I guess it's technically correct to do it this way, to do it the fancy way. Because I get one more point of damage that way. Crew the boat using the token and the elf, and then crew the chariot with the boat. Which essentially means that I crewed the chariot with three power. Uh, I feel like I'd be much more inclined to keep this on the play. On the draw, it's a little sketchy, but Fatih's does do a lot of work. I'm gonna try it. Probably get probably get punished, but yeah, there's a lot of people doing the uh, the cube for charity event, which is nice. Okay, that's either a really good draw or a really bad draw. I think they're playing blue eye control, but let's find out. Okay, it is confirmed a good draw. So I don't actually care about Thalia because I have Fatal Push. I'm just gonna take Adeline. This matchup has to get significantly better with Fatal Push over other red removal, right? What tracker is that? Briar Bridge. Pioneer All-Star Briar Bridge Tracker. You heard of it? Alright, I'm gonna push main phase. Brave the elements, etc. No, it's Briar Bridge. So the reason I'm playing Briar Bridge over Tireless is because Briar Bridge by itself, um, without having to sacrifice a clue for Tireless, crews Chariot. So I think it's a little bit better. Or at least that's why I'm playing it over Tireless. Icy Wool, thank you so, so much for the four months, buddy. Much appreciated. Welcome back to the Doom Room. Hope you're having an excellent day today. Yeah, no, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it is possible. Like, I, I'm not, I, I think Tireless is a better card, but I think if you're playing Chariot, I like Briar Bridge just a little bit more, but it's close. So they can Lieutenant to get the Thalia above Trespasser range. I wonder if they attack with Mutavault. They probably just go activate, assuming they're last, they don't have anything else, they just go double activate, play Lieutenant, attack for three. Okay, or they do it this way. I'll probably trade for the Mutavault this, if they do this. May have just taken it? Taken what? What do you mean by taking it? Oh, they're not attacking with Mutavault. Why did, okay, they fucked up then. If they weren't attacking, they should have just animated this. Lieutenant Thoughtseize over play a threat. Oh, you wanted to play the Thoughtseize and, and take the Lieutenant instead of playing the Trespasser. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, because I guess now I can't Thoughtseize plus Tracker, right? I can Thoughtseize plus Shadow, which I guess is fine. What could be left over in their hand, though, right? If they had a one-drop, 
they would have went one drop animate mutavolt play lieutenant if they i guess they could have adeline because they didn't have a good adeline attack that turn so that is one spell they could have in their hand i think i should probably fire off thoughts he's here specifically for adeline okay they just fucked up really bad then question is do we attack go to 14 and then we have we could trade for the muta vault with the shadow take seven what they have a muta vault is the last card and planes this is tough i think i'm supposed to attack because i don't think i want to trade trespasser for muta vault um it is nice that the trespasser blanks the 2-2 muta vault but it's close <clears throat> drawing a land would be nice so i can go track or hold up mana like, have better blocks with the shadow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I want to see if they fire up the second Muta Vault. I will trade for the for this Muta Vault if they do. Okay. Unless they attack with Lieutenant, then I'll just eat the Lieutenant, but... Yeah, okay. Trade for Muta Vault, take six, go to eight. I think we're at a pretty good spot. I think we're at a pretty good spot. Just got put on for my 14th broadcast of January. <laughs> nice, JS. Nice, buddy. Should be a lot of fun. Sounds like a, a jam-packed month for you. Okay, not a land, but it is a yep boat. So there are... This can eat separate graveyards, right? Yeah, okay. So I can go to 10, put them to 9, play Tracker, which blocks me to ball. Yeah, I think I'm going to attack here. Attacking's got to be good. I will say the uh, Misery Shadow plus Graveyard Trespasser is kind of a non-bow. But, you know, you just kind of live with it. It's something you just kind of live with. Nice, dude. That's awesome, man. Sounds exciting. I love doing commentary, too. Commentary is sweet. Yeah, Red Black has the same the same thing. And honestly, it just, like, it doesn't come up that often that it's it's mostly just fine. Like you, like I said, you just kind of live with it. If they fire a Buta Vault, I will block. Okay, I'm not going to block that. God, them playing defense is, like obviously so good for me <laughs> oh you're engineering okay okay i gotcha Fatal push i think i'm gonna push the muta vault tbh i mean i'm just gonna send in the clowns push the muta vault i might just let the trade happen and play a second tracker mm -mm 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 -mm. what is this they're going to make a one one uh Okay. Are they going to double block the tracker? It'd be really good for me if they did. <clears throat> I think they'll chump. I think they might double block. It's really good for me if they double block. I mean, it's a little bit awkward because I can't use my mana efficiently, but... Alright, they do decide the chump. Wait, am I dead to brave or something? Three, four, five... Like, I'm trying to think if I play tracker, am I dead to brave? Even if they have creature plus brave as their last two cards, it's only six damage, right? Correct? Creature, 3-3, three, three, Brave, 6, go to 1. Okay, I, I can afford to play the tracker here. I think. Yeah, Brave's 2 mana too. Well, also, Brave, uh, people seem to forget this a lot, but Brave does not give Muta Vault protection. So I'm still allowed to block Muta Vault, even if they Brave. It only, only gives your white creatures protection. But yeah, it's also 2 mana Brave too, so it's like, makes their things even more awkward. Oh, do they have Brave and they think that their Muta Vault can't be blocked? Oh, uh, no, they uh, have a Thalius Lieutenant. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I guess I was dead to Lieutenant Brave. Right, Lieutenant Brave killed me. Yeah, if they have Brave, then I'm dead. I could have played around that by holding up Muta Vault plus Fatal Push. Maybe that's a better line. Just don't play the Tracker. Yeah, that might be a punt. Problem is we have to block. Yeah, but then the tra the glutton's lethal, right? Like they're not getting out of this, right? So now I just trade for the Mutavolt and Lieutenant, take four, go to three, and then I just had guy go fatal push this kill you. I guess they could have another one drop to play, but I think if they had a one drop, they would have played a pre combat. So I don't think they have a one drop. Yeah, they're dead. All right, cool. Sick game. Very very sick game. Ooh. Close game, close game. 
kind of like holding up push because we can conceivably we boat next turn if they do nothing, so we push Thalia. That's a good point too, right? Because we have four lands. Assuming that we draw a land, we can go push Thalia, untap both them if things go sour. And it's just like a lot safer against Lieutenant plus Brave. So yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Do I want any of these cards in this matchup? I kind of don't think I do, right? Like maybe Trophy, but <clears throat> do we think they're going to bring in Wedding Announcement? Do I even care about winning announcement? Like, I don't have any, like, Ray of Enfeeblements in my sideboard or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't really want Vraska in my deck on the draw against Thalia. If I wanted something for wedding announcement, it would either be Liberator or Terra Sunder. <laughs> Dude, I had that same experience uh, two days ago, Tater Tot. <laughs> Cast Minskin Boo for the first time. And, like, when you read the card, you don't really understand how fucked up it is. And then once it's in play, you're like, Oh, okay. I get it now. That's the joke. Boat's bad. No, boat's crazy against Mono White. What? I mean, yeah, you have to keep Valley off the board, but that's kind of true anyways, right? Crocus is decent against it, yeah. Crocus is just a messed up card in cube. I think I'm going to trim a tracker and play one Terra Sunder. Just as like a um a wedding announcement hedge that can also kill something for four mana. Not the most efficient card, but <clears throat> is the black felt better than red so far? Thoughtseize is messed up. Thoughtseize is better than all of the red cards, I think. Even, even, might even be better than Stormseeker. <clears throat> but the rest of the black cards, I could take or leave. Replaceable level. Alright, to five we go. Could have got a Thoughtseize, maybe. Uh, might have to, uh, might have to go to game three here in, in just a second. <laughs> okay. Best hand so far. Uh, I keep two lands, elf push. Maybe I keep... Yeah, I'm going to keep two land, elf push. I mean, I'm not going to win this game, but... I could pretend like I have a chance. If I notice that Pioneer seems more removal heavy than modern? 100%, <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I'm going to play elf first. I don't need the elf. I think my only, like realistic chance in this game is if I curve out and go like three drop you know elf into three into four or something you know what I mean like when you're on four cards you kind of have to just plan for like I understand that elf didn't do anything in my opening hand but I think in the best case scenario I need the elf to be able to like get uh, you know what I mean get get out from under this um I'm gonna push now to play around brave could have played a 5-5 five five there, but 5-5's five kind of mid if they just have, um, whatchamacallit, Brutal Cathar. Elf also, Elf also gets me to Gigantha faster if that's the way that this game plays out. What's up, Ape Shit? How you doing, buddy? I think the music's too low. Turn up a little bit. Adeline. That's bad. I'm in danger. I mean, I did mold a four this game, so I didn't expect to win. Yeah, exactly. That's That was kind of my thought process. I mean, good magic card. Uh, I don't know if it's good enough, but... I think if they cast Cathar, I'll probably scoop. No attacks. It's better EV to open chests or sell them. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to tell you open every time, but... That might not be everybody's point of view. I prefer to open them. I mean, honestly, if you go to GoatBots.com, Ventus, they have a calculator where... Let me see. Where's the calculator? you guys know? I know it's on here somewhere. Uh, Treasure chest. Yeah, so if you go to GoatBots.com and go to Tools and Treasure Chest, it actually tells you what the expected value based on, of, a, of a, opening a treasure chest based on their current buy prices. So if think about it, they buy chest at 2.3, but your expected value is 2.43. So, I mean, take that information as you will. It's not much of a difference, but it is a slight difference. Yeah, and that's all. It also, you have to figure out, like, are you going to utilize those play points? Like, I play every single day, so I always need play points. But if you only play, like, every so often and you're not going to use the play points, then maybe you don't want to, you know what I mean, keep that in consideration as well. All right, game three, all the marbles. This hand is much, much better. Opening does have that that sweet, sweet dopamine value, true. All right, this hand's excellent. 
How about the mana be if we splashed a bit of red for Stormseeker? Uh, ooh, kept seven, no one drop. I like to see that. I think the mana is a little too sketch with uh, with Stormseeker. I think it's Elf Shadow here because that plays towards drawing boat. Yeah, I think it's Elf Shadow here. Mm -mm. They kept a seven card hand and did not play a one drop. That is perplexing. Action. They didn't play a one drop or a two drop. Okay, I'm really confused. Misclick keep? Maybe. Perhaps. <laughs> I paid him in between rounds. Funny that we actually drew the boat too. So I kind of got rewarded for playing the elf last turn. Maybe they're going to mana tithe me. Yep, boat. Now we just need the Joel to go with it. Tried boats with Fable. I have. The issue with boats and Fable is you don't actually have a ton of stuff that you actually want to crew. Or copy, excuse me. Fateful Absence. Um, now, maybe that's not much of a concern, because you do have, like, Stormseeker and stuff, but... Like, the other thing about boats, too, is you tend to not have a ton of cards in hand. Because you're, like, playing elves and you're curving out, so you don't really have, like... You don't always have two cards in hand to discard to Fable. So it's kind of awkward there, and... I don't know, like, I'd rather just be playing a Bone Crusher or uh, a Stormseeker on with three mana, so... It's just, like, I have tried it, but I just never was a big fan of it. No, this is Mono White. We've already played them. This is game three. So they have, what, a removal spell for boat? Do I care if they Fateful Absence my boat? Uh, I don't think so. Well, maybe I do, actually. Let's actually just... Let's, let's just, like, time walk them. Let's just play Trespasser, eat the Shadow, play Shockland, pick up Jeff... Yeah, like this. Let's just, like, make them not use their mana. They clearly have something if they're holding up mana, right? I think I can afford to play around it, especially if this is their removal spell. Yeah, so they kept a seven-card hand, didn't play a one-drop, didn't play a two-drop, and their turn to play was Fateful Absence on my Misery Shadow. Not not the expected outcome when you're playing against Mono White Humans, but... That, f fortunately for us, does not kill Sky Sovereign. You have to discard a card to kill the Trespasser. How is Shadow Ben? I like this card a lot. It's really nice, too, because this deck has a lot of mana sources, um, which is, like, the theory behind playing Mutavault in the red-green boats deck is because you want to play 24 lands for the games where you either don't have elves or your elves die to be able to cast your Sky Sovereign up the curve. So, but when you're playing with 24 lands and 8 elves, your, your curve is just generally pretty high. So the nice thing about... Uh, Misery Shadow is just more things to do when you're flooding out, which, you know, happens a decent amount given the, the given the context of your deck, right? Because you have so many mana sources, but it's it's just a nice mana sink. And then you obviously have a lot of creature lands too, so you are not short on things to do with your mana, which is nice. Always Always a good place to be. You know, I think that's a lot of... It's one of the things that newer players really don't understand. Because a lot of newer players, like, when they look at a card, they always think of best-case scenario. But they don't really understand that, like, best-case scenario is only, like, 10% of the time. And having insurance against your bad draws is very, very important in, in just in general in the game of Magic. Okay. I accept. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're on the my hand is just not it plant. <laughs> my hand is just not it. That's the the new quote of the day. My hand, just not it. Can you imagine people who played Nantuko Shade back in 2002 and 2003, if we told them that we were going to get this card called Misery Shadow, they would like shit their pants, you know? Uh, let's start by cracking a clue. Yep, clue. Ooh, nice. What you got? What you got over there? Now we get to take a look at their uh, not it hand. I know, right? Nobody nobody would believe you. <laughs> like, I think we're about to get a 4-0 prediction chat. My knees are weak. Okay, Gigantha down. Jeff down. Yeah, I guess they just kept the hand that was like all reactive cards and three drops. I mean... It's not a good place to be. Like, realistically, looking at that hand, what hand do you think they kept? Alright, I'll leave the trophy prediction is going to start now. 
All right, trophy prediction is live, chat. We are we are currently 4-0. Are we going to trophy? Are we going to trophy? It's nice to get, like, you know, play, it, play a new... So it might be, like, the most offensive one, which is a weird thing to say, but... Um, we're on the play. We have two one-mana spells, a trespasser, and a beast. I'm going to keep this. Wish I had an elf, but... How do I feel about this list versus the gruel list? So I think Fatal Push is kind of mid, but Thoughtseize is messed up. Thoughtseize is just, like... If you're just play Thoughtseize, that card is so good. I might like try. I might try cutting pushes. If we play another league with this, maybe replace them with more threats. But I don't know. It's just like maybe keeping pushes good. Just having more one mana plays. <coughs> Got day zero banned. Well, in Commander, in in the format that's not real, right? Uh, I shouldn't say that. I don't want to get canceled on Twitter. A little Rakdos action. <laughs> please, please don't cancel me, chat. Please don't, don't do it. No, I don't want to get canceled. It took the Chariot. Marcus Chariota. Uh, all right, playoff. Drake Sasser, yeah. <laughs> he will not, he will not hesitate to cancel me. Ooh, a little main deck bank buster. Bust and 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 makes me feel good. All right, we'll pretend that didn't happen. It's the idea that Thoughtseize will almost go as one for one while trading up. Let's let you see their hand. Um, the reason Thoughtseize is so messed up is because there, there's a lot of decks in Pioneer. Maybe Rakdos is a bad example. Like, this is one of the few matchups where Thoughtseize is bad. But there's a lot of decks in Pioneer that, like, kind of rely on very specific cards and very specific interactions, and getting to pick those apart is very powerful. And, yes, the information that you gain is 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 uh, certainly powerful as well. I don't know if we'll keep tonight. I want to do a league with this and a league with green-white, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, they know about the push. They don't want to crew here. It's going to suck if they played Shieldred, but... <laughs> Let's hope they don't do that. No, green-white vehicles. It's like the same shell with elves, chariots, boats, but we're playing different three drops. We're playing... The list has Brutal Cathar, um, Anointed Peacekeeper, and I think Skyclave. I can't remember. I think it was Skyclave. And they missed a land drop. That's good. So why don't we go... I think I'm going to play Lovestruck Beast. The reason for that is because it contests the Shieldred. Okay, this scooped anyways. Easy. We get to bring in our card for the grindy matchups. Uh, I'm going to cut all of my thoughts eases. What do I want in this matchup, though? Do I just want to bring in Go Blank? <clears throat> yeah, that's true. I could, like, sacrifice a creature, basically, to, to, to Fatal Push the Shield Rid. Spellbinder inside. No, maybe I had Spellbinder main deck. I can't remember. I'll, I'll look at the list after. It's actually on the stream deck, or if you want to take a look. Oh, the, the Binder Clip. Yeah, the Binder Clip is great. What do you think is better against them? Go Blank, Scavenging Ooze... I don't know if I want Liberator. They did show me the Bank Buster, but... <laughs> this is 4-0, oh, yeah. Turns out when you just put Elves and Chariots in your deck, and, uh, you can't go that wrong. Can't be. It can only be so bad when you have Elves and Chariots. Pioneer Deck Building 101, brought to you by twitch.tv slash doomlink. I'm going to bring in Go Blank. I just don't think I care that much about Bank Buster. Wish I had a better answer to Shieldred in the sideboard. Maybe that's something I should consider. Playing like a go for the throat type go for the throat type card specifically for Shieldred. That could be a, a good way to go about it. I don't like mulling against Rakdos, but this hand is really bad. Well, I guess we're going to game three. I don't think I've ever beaten Rakdos on a mold of five. Uh, I'm just gonna keep all my threats, I guess. Mm, mold of five and get thought seized, huh? This should be a, a grand old time. A hoot. I'm willing to take a point of damage to kill a trespass or a harvester just to not give them the information that I drew Urborg. Okay, that's a good one. It's one of the cards that is in my deck. Terra Thunder for Bankbuster Fable, maybe their boat. Yeah. Terra Center can also potentially kill Shieldred, so... Could be okay. Hmm. Do I want to play Trespasser in... Yeah, I think that's fine. I 
I'm going to eat my Trespasser. I think I just want it. I, I want the life. Maybe that's worse than eating Thoughtsies, because, like, could maybe get cards out of the graveyard for Kroxa. Missed the prediction. No, JS. No. <laughs> you got to get those points. You're so close to that Dodo deck. You can almost taste it. It tastes like mac and cheese. Target player discards a card. Uh, man, they have to have Shieldred, right? I'm I'm considering keeping Lovestruck Beast, so I have a 5-5 five five that can test Shieldred, but I don't think that's actually that good. No, I think I want to keep the boat. Maybe I'm too far away from the boat. It's just like, that, that card is so good against them. But maybe I'm too far away from it. Okay, no Shieldred. That's really good for us. That is very, very good for us. And we drew maybe one of the best possibles. Okay, I'm just going to get both of their cards now. I guess maybe the one damage is more relevant, but I want to keep their graveyard low for Kroxa. I guess they could have Extinction Event, which would stink, but... There's no shot we're putting us on a Mold of Four, right? Like, there's just no chance. Hmm. Probably should discard the boat now, right? Yeah, I probably should discard the boat now. An extinction event, right? Yep. As expected. Damn it. Okay. Maybe we can Jeff. It's a good one. Gotta find a land, though. Gotta find a land here. Okay. Winnable. Kinda. Land is huge. <sighs> Should have specified. Uh, I really don't want to... I, I don't want a Mutabolt into a Fatal Push. I think that's bad. They could also have Stomp. Likely going to end up pushing the Shaman token, but I'll, uh, I'll let them Fable first. <laughs> I do never specify. That is true. I need to be a little bit more careful of my, my word choice. Working towards that donor deck about 30k away, Model Blue Devotion about the 2-3. Let's go! That's fine. Totally fine with this. Like, I'm at 18. I can take a, I can take a million hits from this thing. So their hand's either all lands or all reactive cards. Most likely all reactive cards. Out of those three movies, which one would you see with your family? Puss and Boots, Wakanda Forever, Avatar. Probably Avatar, right? Although I haven't seen... I, I actually... I think I saw the first one, but I, I haven't seen the new one. I think I saw the first one. I don't even remember. I push the token. I just don't want to give them more mana. I guess they... Yeah, maybe they have enough mana that it doesn't matter. Maybe pushing the, the token doesn't do anything. But like I said, I don't really care if they want to fire up the hive. That just doesn't matter. They might have a second extinction event. Okay, they have Bone Crusher. <clears throat> now I guess they can just play the Bone Crusher. Which can potentially trade for the Chariot. Might actually be okay with them trading Bone Crusher for Chariot. I need to draw a land here to play. Untap land, I should say. Okay, that's good. So we go play Gigantha. I'm going to offer the trade. Because, like, trade gives me a second token, and it also gives them something, one less thing to do with uh, Reflection. And now I just have, like, nine power with a Mutavolt and a Lair. So I think this is a good spot. Nothing? All right, what type of reactive cards do we think they have? Is it just fire up layer shove with everything? I think I like fire up layer shove with everything. If they want to, they can hive eat a cat token, which I think I'm okay with. Because they can go like eat a cat token, chump gigantha, take five. Yeah, they could push. They could like, I guess worst case is like eat this. Oh, they don't know. Pepe left. Pepe left. They are unaware. <laughs> they are they are visibly unaware, chat. <laughs> they are unaware. Now they're at two. You'll love to see it. Mm. The draw. Oh, don't tell me you drew a good card. Oh, that's like worst possible for me. Fuck. That's really bad. Actually, it's maybe not that bad. Because if they tap the Reflection and then sack the Harvester, they only have one blocker. And I have the Mutabolt, right? So now what they can do is, in combat, copy the Harvester, block, block. 
I guess if they drew a removal spell for Gigantha, then this is bad. I mean, I, I can't play around it. I have to attack. Block, block, sack. They can't sack at instant speed, so they need to, they need to, they need to have drawn a removal spell. Yeah, sack is only sorcery. So if they drew a removal spell, they can go, like, chump block, push, or chump block, block, push, or something. Hold. Damn it. All right. So now they go trade chump. But they lose their harvester, which is massive. Like, them losing the harvester here is so huge for us. Uh, play the elf in case I draw boat. All right, just brick. Draw land, please. Draw land, draw land, draw land. Somebody told me. Okay, it's not a land. It is a chump blocker. Well, now they can chump block with the token. Give me a boat. Boat, boat, boat. Uh, okay. I am not going to... I'm not going to main phase sack the clue. But I am going to sack the clue. Forcing them to do the, the token line here, because then they can't have the extra token on their turn. Gives them a little bit less access. Yeah, we can sack the clue end of turn, which plays run a discard spell. I guess they can't guess thoughts of two anyways, but it is a tight fucking game. <clears throat> this is a really tight game. They chose not to use Fable. Fuck. It'd be nice if they bricked once. <laughs> I just need them to brick once. Please. Please. Please brick once. Okay, that's fine. A little take on me. Okay. Oh. Uh... Oh, I guess we lose. This is only game two, though, so we can still go to game three. Also, I mulligan to four this game, and this game is still this close, which is unreal. I mulled the four against Rakdos, got thoughts eased, and this game is still, like, kind of close. <laughs> I mean, that's just how good this matchup is, you know? I thought I mulled the four. And no, this was a game I mulled the four, I thought. I'm, was it... Which game did I mulled the four? I know I mulled the four in one of my games. Oh, the mulled the four is versus humans. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Right. Yeah, we mulled the five, got thoughts using this game, still, like, pretty close. They also drew, like, five bangers in a row, you know? <laughs> and they had to basically draw all of those bangers. We're still not dead. If we draw a boat, we probably still win. I guess we have to go, like, boat into a creature to crew it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? They had to draw, like, five bangers in a row to be to even be competitive. All right, all right. We'll settle this in game three. God, dude. Mm. Is this, like, a cover? It's definitely a cover. I like this. Yeah, they drew back-to-back -back push. They drew very well. Let's say that. They drew very well. Above average, as some would say. Yeah. Let's play Ooze here. I don't like Ooze against Bone Crusher Giant. Mm. That was a nice cover. Uh, I mean, lands and spells. I just keep lands and spells against Rakdos. It's not the best, um, you know, mix of lands and spells, but. Surely they can't draw that well twice in a row, right? That game was close. Again, they had to, like, in combat, loot into a push. And then also draw Extinction Event the turn after. It was not a donut list, now. Okay... Every Rectus player always draws the nuts. I know. It's crazy. Chariot. Not oh, Chariot, damn it. Uh, play the Muta Vault. Gives up free information, but there's a chance I Muta Vault next turn? I don't know. Maybe I should have not attacked with the Elf there and held back the Fatal Push in case they have Blood Scythe Harvester. Or even Fable Token. I might have Fatal Push Fable Token. Yeah, I think that was better. I think I should have tapped the elf and then held up the overgrown tomb. If they have Trespasser, I miss a point of damage, but yeah, slightly better against Fable. Well, no, because I can just play the boat. Yeah, this is fine. It's totally fine. They showed us two Coligans commands, though, so it's not like they're, you know, they have adapted. They have outs to the boat. Why would they do that upkeep? What is the possible upside of doing an upkeep? I don't get it. <laughs> the foil company on top, yeah. <laughs> um, I think I just use my mana efficiently and play Gigantha.
Eat the Groxa. You can do that next turn. Can't do that next turn now. Did they play a tap land last turn? I figured if they had Thoughtseize, they would have fired it off. What land did they play last turn? Yeah, they played Blood Crypt tapped. So they have to have drawn that. That's unfortunate. Wait, they didn't take Trespasser? Oh, he drew that too. Okay, pretty good. Uh, so... Why don't we attack first? And then I can go, go blank plus Fatal Push. My dad made me ribs for dinner, so I'm going to be absent from chat. I got you, JS. Enjoy the ribs, buddy. That sounds good. Tap Jag for mana? No. What am I? What? Why would I tap Jag for mana? I'm just going to end their career. They're going to have no cards in hand and have a 2-2. I guess they have a blood, but... Kek by Everybody wave Kek by to their graveyard. Okay, they have a Bone Crusher, which I guess they can double block with. <sighs> just draw land, please. Please, my, please draw land. I'm asking very nicely. <laughs> please. Give me a boat. Boat off the top. Okay. So if I attack, I would be trading Bone Crusher for Gigantha. Is that a good trade? It's not a bad trade because it shuts off the Reflection's ability to do anything. But it might also just be better to play Trespasser, Shadow, and Pass. Mm. This is close. So they copy, trade for the original Bone Crusher. I play Trespasser, Shadow. They go to eight. The, okay, so the cool thing about that is they won't... I guess they would still have mana to Bone Crusher stomp next turn. I think it's fine, actually. I think it's fine. I'll attack. I think it's fine. Isn't this title old news? Well, it's official now. <laughs> it was old until it was official. Okay. Kill the original Bone Crusher. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like Facebook official, you know. <laughs> yeah, F's in chat. Rip in pepperoni for Doom Lake playing modern. Okay, well, even if they brick, they still get a look at something with the blood token. Nice thing is if they draw Extinction Event, I have an even and an odd. So I guess they would do evens, because then they would keep their fable, but... Tell me, tell me that I'm worth something. We still have two Muta Vaults, though. So even if we get Wrath, it's not that bad. Now we have double Muta Vault. We're kind of... We're in the driver's seat for sure, but they have a lot of good... They have a lot of good top decks. And they are passing the turn. Okay, uh, we like that. I'm just going to fire up both Muta Vaults. This is the mode in which we just attack with all. Attack you with all of the creatures. I will eat Elf, Lovestruck Beast. So they go to six. What do they have? Soken's on for two tokens. Okay. So I guess they can go trade, chump, chump, take two. Go to four. Okay, that's fine. All right. Go to four. Still have two Muta Vaults, though. <clears throat> pause champ, pause champ, pause champ. A pause champions. I did all I could. I have done all I can this, this game. <clears throat> Say what you need. This song is really good. This match was really fun. You know? People talk shit about Pioneer all the time. This match was so much fun. <laughs>